Hi, I'm Phil Young. I'm the chair of the Fisheries Council of Canada. How would you characterize Canada's fisheries industry today? What are our strengths and what do we have to build on or frankly fix um, you know, in this area of our economy? Well, first of all, it's, it's a really dynamic industry. And that's been one of the things that attracts a lot of people to it. We have the perfect product. I mean, it's renewable. It's uh, good for you. It tastes great. So the product kind of sells itself, but we're still going to have challenges. And, and I think one of the things that the industry has shown over the past 50 years is that we're adaptable and we've been able to make the changes that we need to. So when overfishing, environmental issues really came to the fore in the last 20 years, the Canadian industry has been able to adapt to it. And I think we've done really well, not just ourselves, but with DFO as well. And we've put in the things that we need. We've got monitoring. We've got validation. We stay within our quotas. We've done all those things. We selectively fish. So what we've done is built an industry that we believe is sustainable. And in fact, it's been, it's got the certifications that we need through things like Marine Stewardship Council to, to say that, hey, yeah, the world agrees that what we're doing is right. So I think we're good on that side. We've addressed the need for better quality. You know, people just, it is a given now. You better have good quality. So we've done it on the boats with refrigeration, shorter trips, better handling. We've done it in the plants where we've got better food safety. Um, and we've gone to some technological uh, changes inside the plants to make them put out a really, really good product that is desired around the world. I mean, we are an export product, so that's really worked. Uh, going forward, I think we just have to keep on top of what trends are, are coming at us. So marine protected areas, we already know they're, they're well on their way, and the industry is taking a role in that as we work with DFO, uh, but there's going to be a lot more. I mean... <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I think I see ethical things as really a, a truly big issue that's coming upon us. I think we're w very, very well positioned to deal with that, but they're there. Um, and I think we've got to do other things. We've got to look at climate change. Um, that's going to change maybe the species, where we fish, how we fish. So we better be prepared to make sure not only the industry can adapt, but our management can adapt, that they have the tools to be able to do those things. So to me, we've got a lot of things to do, but I really believe we can do them. Briefly, but it is the elephant in the room. I mean, COVID-19 has impacted Canada's entire economy, frankly, the globe's. Um, what would you say has been the response of the Canadian government uh, in support of the fisheries industry? And, and what are the priorities through and, you know, hopefully soon post COVID-19 for the industry? Um, well, first of all, I think everybody recognized right away that it just was not going to be business as usual. We saw our markets dry up. We saw problems in plants, you know. Right away, we had problems just keeping workers. There was that fear when you heard about a meat plant having a problem. Well, we're a processing plant. It's very much the same thing. And so we had workers who were sort of afraid. I think the government was a, a little slow in reacting to the fact that w fishing is a food product. And we didn't get deemed an essential service right away. Um, it took a few weeks. But a few weeks really did matter. And once they did declare us an essential service, it really worked well for us because then our workers had a sense that, okay, what I'm doing is valuable, it matters, and it's important. But we had to do a lot as well as companies to address COVID. I mean, we had to get the protective equipment for people. We had to set up the barriers. We had to change configuration. We had to make sure that they felt safe. And it, it cost a lot. Uh, the government has done a great job on the processing side. They were right there to help us. Uh, they announced the program. There's one specifically, the Canadian Seafood Stabilization Fund that helped the industry. I think they did a nice job on that. The harvesting side, we've had a little bit more of a difficult thing. The 
program was only announced in the last month and it closes in a couple of weeks and we're finding people are having difficulties accessing that. Um, but even then, the government's saying, listen, just get a number, get into the system, and we're going to figure out a way to make sure it works because they are, uh, their incomes are going down. There's no doubt about it. The value of products are going down. Products are sitting in, in inventory longer than they used to. So we've got some things to do on that. Going forward, I think that really we don't know what's going to happen on the food service side. I mean, that's people not going out to restaurants right now that really is hurting our products because we have a lot of high-end, really top-notch white tablecloth products and they can't get out there right now. They can't do it. So, you know, we've got those things. Um, we're making changes to get them into retail because seafood at retail is actually doing very well. I think people have recognized that, you know, if I can't go out and eat seafood in a restaurant, I'm going to find a way to bring it home and learn to cook. That's a whole other story, getting people to start to think about cooking seafood, but uh, we're doing it. I think that'll be good. Um, and really, so for government side on the reaction to COVID, we've got to make sure those markets stay open. I, I think that's the biggest thing they can do. You know, the Brexit happening right now, right in the midst of everything. We've got to make sure we still have access to the UK market. Uh, our different issues, trade issues with China that keep raising their head. It's still an important market for us. So we've got to make sure that stays open. So the government is doing a good job. They're keeping on task of things that really um, we will need eventually. We will need those markets. It'll help us and we'll adapt. We'll figure it out as an industry. Um, is value addition also an area of, uh, let's say, improvement or opportunity for the Canadian fisheries industry in the future? Oh, without a doubt. It, it's something that, you know, for a long time, we just took the product out of the water, stabilized it, did what we could. But you're seeing more and more. You're seeing the lobster guys take more steps to do things with that. Or in the West Coast where I am, we're seeing salmon. Uh, it used to all just be headed and gutted. You know, you, you'd throw out a slab of salmon into a retail store and people didn't know how to deal with it, didn't know what it was. Almost all of our product now goes out of salmon fillets or portions of salmon where you can see it, you can look at it. I think that helps, you know, you get the bones out as much as you can. And then you do look at the value added things. I mean, we throw away almost nothing out here in, in our company. Um, some of it, yes, goes into meal and things like that, the others, but it goes, some goes to bait. We do have people who take our skins out here. So it's one of the things that I, I think over time, the industry must continue to do that. We have to look at that. Um, some people worry about that. There, there, are, there are social issues with some of those. And the social issues really are that what you do is you're, you need a bigger plant. You need some consolidation to do value added. You know, you need that work in there year round. And so... If you have a little plant that's just stabilizing the product, they probably can't do all the value added. They might not have a cold storage there to hold it, to do the next step along the way. Um, and Canada is such a big country. It's not like some of the smaller countries that you've got everything in a few big port cities. Uh, we've got a, I think we can do it, but it takes some thought and it's going to take some work. Now, I don't know if the new FCC uh, chair has already been announced, to him or her, but um, if you had uh, him or her in front of you, uh, what would you encourage him or her <laughs> to do? Uh, what's the low-hanging fruit or perhaps what's the, what's the most important or most urgent priority uh, to, you know, to, to, to continue promoting the development of Canada's fisheries industry? The things that I'd say and, and what I see as the opportunities in this is, uh, we're getting near the end of our latest five-year plan for FCC. We're going to have to revise that. Uh, we have a great president and somebody who 
will try to set us in a direction that's good for everybody. But I think the new chair is going to have to herd a bunch of cats. Uh, we have a lot of opinionated people in this industry. Um, and really that new chair is going to have to keep us all on track, focused, get above the individual little issues because this is going to be a five-year plan. So it's look at the big questions. You know, what can we do? What is, what is going to come at us? And I think just corralling all the people around them is going to be the key for that. Um, the other thing is, without a doubt, access to the resource, as I mentioned earlier, will continue to be an issue. It is something we see marine protected areas continuing to grow. Um, we need to make sure that, not that there's no impacts on fishing, but that good sustainable fishing is allowed to occur as we make these changes on bigger picture things. So I think there's always going to be a lot of work to do on access. It's not, you know, there's going to be, I mentioned earlier, the missing surveys for some of the, some of the fisheries out here and on the East Coast because of COVID. Um, you know, how are we going to replace that information or catch up in that information so that we have good information to manage our fisheries? The only way we're going to get access is if we can prove that it's sustainably harvested harvested. So to me, that's a big thing. And um, I would also say that the new chair really has to continue to let Fisheries Council of Canada be a voice for the entire industry. I think that's really important to all of us, that we're not a bunch of disparate views from each coast, but that we have a sense of of oneness of everything that we put forward. So I, I think they'll do a great job. I, I know them and working with Paul, our president, I, I think will do a great job. So final question, um, an elevator pitch. Um, if you got to choose to pitch a person or a group with the power to influence Canada's fisheries industry, who would you choose? And what would you say to him, her or them uh, to improve um, Canada's industry? Without a doubt, it would have to be the Prime Minister. I mean, a lot of the policies are uh, very high up government policies that are affecting us. And my pitch to him would be very short and sweet. Fisheries are a renewable resource that, if properly managed, can bring wealth to individuals, companies, and Canada as a whole. So before you make broad sweeping policy statements, please vet them with the industry, with the people who have invested in this industry so that at least we can give you a heads up of the impact because in saving something, we want to make sure that we can continue to bring some economic wealth to Canada. Protecting the environment and prosecuting fisheries do not have to be mutually exclusive.